Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Goodbye Bullshit, Hello Happiness, episode 33. Love that number. And today um, I had received some questions uh, about how to stay in alignment and awareness, especially when daily life is happening. How do we stay present? And answering some other questions that I've received. So I thought, let's just make it into uh show a session here and um also this week i mean i think this topic goes well with what we've talked about so far in the past shows and also in the membership group that i have is called the solistic unicorns in that um we've been talking about staying present as well so i thought everything can go sort of smoothly together. Um, so part of the alignment and awareness is that um, you got to be willing to sit with yourself, sort of be present for yourself as your thoughts and emotions are happening. Because a lot of times... Um, as soon as an emotion comes up, uh, and most people, they've been told that um, being emotional is not a good thing, emotions are bad. So we try to stay away from feeling our emotions. And also, um, there's a lot of judgments and like labels, good and bad positive, negative, that's associated with emotions and thoughts. So if you are experiencing any kind of emotion or thought that you've labeled as bad or negative, then you um, tend to want to hide from it, hide it from others, uh, run away from it. And uh, by that, you just create more friction and resistance. So. Um, the best way to first step in being aware and staying present for yourself and others is to try to let go of those labels of good and bad and positive and negative because everything is good everything that's coming to you is coming for a purpose now um, a good practice you know, we've talked about uh, different ways to be present and aware in your daily activities um, before in previous shows like drinking, eating, showering, just those things. But now it's actually being present and being aware of thoughts and emotions. Um, so you're not doing this any kind of activity this is more by intention. Uh, a good practice would be to just take some time. Um, it can be anywhere from three to five minutes. If you can do it longer, great. If not, it's okay. And just for that time, for that duration, allowing whatever is coming up to come up, allowing whatever's showing up to show up. Meaning if there's, um, depending on what kind of person you are more, you feel more emotions than thoughts or the thoughts happen first, then emotions, whichever happens first doesn't matter. But um, if there are thoughts coming up, allowing them to come up as if there's it's like a river a stream that's flowing and letting it flow and you're not grabbing at it you're not touching it and um you're not judging it either you're not saying this is bad this is good uh, just letting it be and you're sort of a, as if you're watching a movie a lot watching those thoughts come and move um, same thing, emotions. If there are emotions coming, there's anger, there's sadness, there's frustration, there's fear, anxiety. Whatever's coming up, staying present for it and, and allowing it to be and not get involved in the story of it. Now, um, 
this is a hard practice for most people. So uh, as a step to this one is if you can sort of peek into the story a little bit without getting attached to it, meaning the emotion that's coming up, it's attached to a certain persona, a certain avatar that you've created and you're um, sort of moving around in your daily activities with. And we have different personas, different uh, avatars, depending on where we at sometimes. Um, you know, multiple personalities, everybody. So uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody's got it, I can guarantee you. Uh, but those avatars, you have an avatar persona for um, your kids, your significant other, for your parents, you as a female, you in workforce, you in um, your, when you're out with your friends, daily life, there are multiple, many different personas. So when, in, um, if you can get a seat, you can either do it by intention, meaning you set a time, like as if you're going to meditate, three to five minutes longer, better. If not, three to five minutes is enough. But during that time, if there's a thought coming up, if there's an emotion coming up, you're sort of, again, just as if you're taking a couple of steps back in order to see it and finding what avatar or persona is associated with. Um, and for example, sadness is there. Sort of, again, you've, you've, when emotions are happening, usually it's happening in a particular point in your body. So feeling it and sort of saying, okay, I'm gonna take one step back and see if I can separate or if I can just like look at it without getting too engaged in what the sadness is feeling. And then sort of looking at the sadness and even asking like, why am I sad? Why is this sadness happening right now? And sort of let that guide you to then their thoughts that come up, their, their statements that happen. And then again, don't get attached to the story of where that avatar or persona is trying to take you. You stay present as if you're talking to this person, as if you're seeing this in a movie happening and you're not getting involved in the story of it. So you can listen better. And um, that's actually another important thing in relationships too, staying present means that whoever, whether it's your friend, whether it's your significant other, your kids, staying present means that you are able to be there for them without judging what's happening to them right now as far as their emotions and thoughts, without getting too attached to what they're feeling or saying at the moment, and without going into their story to try to fix it for them or change their mind. That is the definition of staying present for someone. And it truly is the best gift you can give people that's staying present because you're basically providing a space of love, providing a space of um, healing even for them. And you're being present. It's like a big hug, opening your arms and allowing them to be there without judgment, without anything, and letting them um, go through whatever it is that they're going through. Now, for yourself, when you're staying present, it's the same idea, but rather than having an actual person there, it's you as a persona, you as that avatar that you're staying present and allowing that avatar or persona speak with you and tell you um, sort of their story. Why are they angry? Why are they sad? What's happened? And um, as you would do staying present for your friends or your family, when you're staying present for them, the key is love. 
You're just providing a sp space for love. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to change it. You're not trying to resist it. You're staying present for yourself and just watching it. Um, and that's the best way to, again, for being aligned and aware of what's happening. Now, so the first step was if you can just sit there and let it let everything flow. The next step was that we said, okay, if you can't do that, staying present and following those thoughts and emotions. Now, if that becomes too hard, then it um, finding some sort of movement um, that you can do in order to just uh, release a little bit of it because when it's too intense the thoughts are too intense or the emotion is too intense it's hard to be present because you get involved in your own story and you get involved in what's happening and it's hard to feel that separation so at the moments where it's just too extreme what's best to do it's sort of uh Anything as far as creativity is always the best thing, whether uh, you doodle, you sing, you dance, you cook, um, either, even movement. Um, if you've looked at my tree meditation, tree, tree exercise that I've put out, I give that to a lot of clients. At the beginning of that, there's this tapping that you just tap yourself all over the body. And that, um, and this is not EFT tapping, this is just sort of you're waking up the body, moving the energy around, um, and getting back in touch with yourself. So if the intensity of the emotion or the thought is too much, that's one of the best ways to calm it down. The tapping, movement, singing, dancing, uh, screaming, um, you know, if you have drum, drumming, that's uh, rattle is another good one. Walking in nature, being, or just going outside five minutes, put your feet in the ground and let the earth absorb some of that energy to calm it down, to get it to the point that then you can stay present and uh, listen. It's like if you have a tantruming kid, when the kid is tantruming, the kid's not going to listen to you. It's not going to hear you. You just let the tantrum happen. And then after the tantrum, you go in for a hug or you try to guide them or listen to them and they can talk to you and you can listen. But as the tantrum is happening with the kid, you, you can't do anything anyway. So same concept here that when that sort of your person or your avatar is tantruming and it's at extreme, you got to do allow that time and space for it to calm down and in order to help it any of those activities that i mentioned it's going to help it bring it down and then once it's calmed down then get into that okay finding that persona finding their story of what it is not getting attached to the story at all um Another good way, most of you that know me know that I don't like journaling at all. I don't recommend it to people. Uh, journaling, if you're journaling to put your sort of ideas down, um, if you're writing poems, writing stories, or you want to remember some th things to, um, you know, for example, if there are things that I want to talk about in the show or something, I write it down. That's a different kind of journaling, but a journaling where you are keeping notebooks that go way into your childhood, even sometimes. I know people that they have, I don't know, five, 10 journals from years back and they've kept it. Um, when you put those emotions and thoughts in those journals, those papers are holding energy. Um, I think it was either last episode or, or the episode before that, I talked about everything is energy. You are made up of energy and that energy that you put in the, even the objects in your home, your clothes, your furniture, all that, you give it energy and it has energy as well. So those pieces of paper that you've put your thoughts and emotions into, carry that energy and um 
you do not want to, uh, you can if you want. I mean, again, that's a personal preference. My recommendation would be from my perspective, and I know I've given it to the clients and it really helped, don't keep those pages. Um, burn them, tear them up, do something for it, uh, for the energy to release in those. Uh, I My to-go places are, you know, burning them or um, water with paper is going to be kind of hard. So burning is always easy. But if you want to just rip them up into like shred them and then burn it or shred it and then put it in the ground, however um, you feel it works for you. But release the energy in those pages that you're holding. So coming back to when their emotions or thoughts are very extreme, uh, again, you might have to do a little bit of a tapping or movement, jumping jacks or whatever for a couple minutes and then talk to the thought or emotion and journal it. Or um, if it's not that extreme and it's something that you can communicate with, then you can take a piece of paper and again, as if you're talking to the person, you know, what's the feeling that's present right now? And again, when, when you're talking to it too, you want to talk to it as if it, it is a different person. It's not you or it's, it's a, another entity, it's another part. So it is like, why is this sadness here? Um, and then, you know, you're going to feel it or why am I having this thought? What's the question? So it's like going back and forth and you write it down, you let everything come out. And then after it comes out and you've written everything on the paper, you burn it. Key again is not to get too attached in the story as it's coming out, not go sit in the place of that avatar or persona, um, because then you get sucked into what's happening and it's hard to get separated. And, um, so keeping that separation, writing it on a paper, and then, you know, again, my, I love to burn it, but you release it however you want. Just don't keep that paper. You can even rip it up, put it in the trash, put it in the recycle bin, but do tear it. Don't leave it as a whole. Um, and uh, yeah, those are some of the good uh, ways that you can stay aware and present as your emotions and thoughts are coming up um, and seeing them and not getting too involved in the stories. Um, but again, it goes back to that first step. You got to let go of the judgments, those labels of good and bad, negative, positive, in order to be able to do this more easily. Now, uh, somebody had asked me about relationships too. I think um, relationships for most people, that's, you know, best teachers are all those relationships that you're having. And it's usually either with your significant other or parents and kids. Those are tend to be the major relationships that trigger your uh, personas and avatars. So look at those as the best time, the best place for you to learn and see yourself more clearly. And you've heard me say this before, instead of pointing out to them that they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this, and you know that's why I'm feeling this way. It has to be whatever they're doing, let them do that. And then, but why am I reacting? Why am I feeling this way right now? Why am I having these thoughts right now? And as, that's a form of staying present with yourself and not getting too involved in the relationship aspect of the pull and push in that relationship. But you just sort of taking ownership is putting a block or putting a, a screen around you and saying, okay, this is my responsibility. This is my domain. So let me go clean my house first, my domain, my part of this uh, situation. It's as if, you know, you, you guys ha in a, are in the same room and each is responsible to clean uh, his or her half. 
So you're cleaning up your half right now. And in that part of that's your half and you're standing there and in this exchange, you're just worried about, okay, you do your half, I'm going to do my half. And in my half now, why, why am I reacting this way? Why am I feeling this way? Why are these thoughts coming? Again, it shows you your avatar, shows you your persona, and use any of the methods that I talked about earlier to get in touch with that persona and avatar and see the whys. And just be, again, the key is stay present. You do not want to fix it. You don't want to resist it. You don't want to fight with it. As if you're present, be, staying present for a loved one that's going through um, something that you're just creating that space of love and healing, it needs to be the same for your avatar. You're just being present, listening, and having that space that, you know, gives that avatar, gives that persona some love and freedom and safety for them to speak and uh, tell you what that emotion and thoughts are. So um, that's one of the keys in the relationship and um, staying present, another one. And um, do the awareness exercises that I talked about. Again, if you can set up a time that you do this as a meditation better, um, gets you in that habit of, you know, so when something does come up, you can sort of um, find your separation as it's happening, uh, makes it easier, and also do it as um, you're going through your day and you're, you're feeling a certain emotion or certain thought come up. So always keep that separation. Um, but start with just meditation because when most people, uh, you sit to meditate without any music, without any guidance, your thoughts starts going, you know, oh, I, did I do the, did I turn the stove off? You know, oh, I need to go get groceries right now. What do we need that I need to get? So all those things come up, but even that, that's the practice of watching those thoughts come up and you you keep it's as if you keep stepping back from them keep like moving away stepping back to create a space between that thought and just letting letting it move don't judge it and say oh my god those thoughts came up i wanted to meditate now i didn't meditate i was thinking the whole time don't even go there because that's another form of judgment let it be let it be easy keep stepping back um yeah because life's gonna happen everybody um i put a video recently for um the membership group the wild unicorns and in there i talk about a day that i had that um in the past i would have probably um let what was happening earlier in the day uh take over and you know just count it as a miserable day just stayed present for my son whatever was happening and i allowed the day to be whatever it is i didn't have a mindset or idea of how it's going to be i just stayed present for him i stayed present for my mama persona that um she's either usually tired or she wants to fix it she wants things to change and shift for him um so stay present for that stay present for him and it turned out to be a really good day but before i would have judged it so much i would have been so involved in my own emotions and his emotions that i would have guaranteed you that day would have been one of the most miserable days we would have had but now that I can stay present, I let it be and it turned out to be a magical day with full of magical experiences. And magic, um, you know, you've heard me talk about magic. It, it can be just small thing. You know, you've seen me post my hearts. That's magic for me. Every time I see that little heart anywhere, it's a magic. Every time I you know, I'm like that day, I know I put something in the GPS for the direction of where we were going to. 
and the ETA was 333. To me, that's magic. Um, me wanting to, you know, kill time when I had to drop him off at his, this place and uh, find myself next to my favorite restaurant that I didn't even know this other place was there. Um, interaction with the people that happened, it was beautiful, magical. Um, even today I had a magical moment. My uh, dog had a very old car that has those navigation systems that were already in the car. Those old style, like, you know, how old was my car? 14 years ago. And I haven't even used it in God knows how long, probably 10 years. I haven't used it. I've used the GPS on the phone. But uh, anyway, the dog just put his foot on one of the buttons and I looked at the screen. It had the direction for Unicorn Winery. To me, that's magic because, first of all, I didn't know there is such a winery. I didn't search for it and it just happened to pop up on my uh, screen. So let magic uh, come to you, have fun with it, see those little things, little beautiful moments in your daily life. Um, don't get too bogged down with um, just those emotions and thoughts that are happening and get you involved. That's just a moment in time. Allow for, be present, allow it for it to shift, to move, and let the moment be, next moment be whatever it's going to be. It can surprise you. It can, uh, things can shift at any minute for you. Uh, so have fun, see magic, see beauty. Um, and if you do any of these exercises or exercises I've given you in the past, um, send me a comment, message, let me know how things are going. If there are questions you want me to answer, go ahead, text me. Um, or put in the comment sections, ideas that you want me to cover, um, same thing. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching, for subscribing, for sharing, and um, liking. And I'm grateful for your support and love. Thank you. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Bye.